Good morning, or afternoon, or whenever you're watching this. So I want to talk about uh, the purpose of correlation in this lesson. Correlation and regression are two of the analyses in statistics that are quite often mixed up, um, confused, and there's really not a reason for that other than um, statisticians, I think, have sometimes um, unfortunately chosen symbols to go with particular um, coefficients that they talk about. For example, with correlation we talk about the correlation coefficient, r, and when we're doing regression we talk about r squared. And while it turns out there is a mathematical relationship between the two, um, correlation and regression are used for two different purposes. The other thing they have in common is that with correlation and regression we're dealing with two continuous variables. So unlike our past analyses where one variable was nominal and the other variable was continuous, in the case of ANOVA for example, the independent variables are nominal and the continuous, the dependent variable is continuous. Now we're dealing with two continuous variables and regression and correlation both do that. Okay, so what is the purpose of correlation? Let's, I'm actually making two separate videos on correlation and regression because I want to dissociate them. <laughs> but what correlation does is, the purpose of correlation is to determine the degree of association between two continuous variables. Now that might sound like regression to you, but it shouldn't because the word association is different. Now to make the distinction, so if we have um, a dependent and an independent variable, we would be saying y is a function of x. And in fact, this is what regression does, but not what correlation does. So with correlation, we have two continuous variables, but they're both considered y variables. And we're just looking at the association between them. So let's give an example. So let's say we have two y variables, y1 and y2. And we've measured both of them on a bunch of individuals, so we can plot the points. We might get a result like this, or we might get a result like this. Okay, And we look at correlation and we say, aha, uh -huh, y1 and y2 are positively correlated, y1 here and y2 here are negatively correlated. Okay, so we are looking at the degree of association. We do not draw a line fitting these points because we aren't saying that y depends upon x. We're saying that these values of y1 and y2 are associated. We're actually kind of looking at the codependency of y1 and y2. <clears throat> or the degree to which both of them are affected by some underlying independent variable. But we are not saying y2 depends on y1 or y1 depends on y2. We're looking at their codependency or their association. We don't know the cause. So the cause of the association is not necessarily known. And generally, it's not known. So correlation is often used in an exploratory sense. When we don't have any underlying hypothesis about one causing the other, but we're just looking at the degree of association between two variables. In other words, we don't understand the necessarily the, understand, the underlying biology behind the association. Um, because we're looking at association, you know, we might actually more appropriately, because we don't, well, we're not looking at cause and effect, we might really more appropriately think about correlation this way. Now this kind of puts y1 and y2 on co-equal footing, right? We could have y1 over here and y2 over here. And 
our positive correlation would be this, where we have and a positive association going up and down. Um, and a negative association would be where the increase in one is corresponding to or associated with a decrease in the other. Okay, so we still have our, our values going this way, but by drawing the axes this way, we're not giving precedence of one over the other. In our mind, whenever we draw a graph like this, we think of this being causal and this being dependent, right? So this is independent, this is dependent. And if we draw y1 here and y2 here, our tendency will be for our brain to do the same thing, like saying y1 is causing y2 variation. But that's not what we mean by correlation at all. So if we drew them this way, um, we would actually kind of in our minds not be saying one is causing the other because one is not set up like an x variable often is. Okay, so what's our null hypothesis with correlation? Our null hypothesis is basically, I'm going to redraw it this way anyway because it's a traditional to draw it the other way. Our null hypothesis is that we've taken a shotgun, okay, and, and we're getting a shotgun splatter of points. In other words, there's no up or down or right or left tendency here. And our null hypothesis is uh, a splatter of points. Now, when we actually get to calculating the correlation coefficient, our null hypothesis is r equals zero. And so I've already kind of Spilled the beans here, R is our correlation coefficient. And R can be negative or R can be positive. So a positive R value would be seen something like this. Okay, R equals positive and a negative correlation would be something that looks like this. Okay, so um, but, so we have positive correlation, we have negative correlation, and we have zero correlation. And our null hypothesis is zero correlation. Okay, so when we do statistics on correlation, we're asking whether R is significantly different from zero, um, and whether it's significantly negative or significantly positive. Okay, we are not interested in drawing a slope line in here, okay, because we are not estimating some kind of cause and effect relationship here. So I want to emphasize some mistakes that are commonly made with correlation. And one of those mis mistakes is drawing a slope line. Because if you're doing that, then you're doing regression. Okay, so never, when you're doing correlation, draw in a slope line. Also, another mistake I commonly see is an R square is given. Never give an R square when you're doing uh, correlation. Give an R value instead. Okay, so, so that's a problem. Another mistake I often see is that people say they're doing correlation, they use the word correlating, and they correlate y with x. Well, you don't correlate y with x, you correlate y with y. You correlate two continuous codependent variables, and you would not have a reason to call one of them x and one of them y, because x we associate with independent variables and y with dependent then we're not doing correlation, we're doing regression. So you only say the word correlation when you're actually calculating the correlation coefficient, not R squared, and when you're not calculating a slope or a functional relationship between Y and X. Okay, so be sure that when you are doing correlation, you are calculating a correlation coefficient, you're testing whether that R is significantly different from zero, and you don't have a cause and effect relationship that you're exploring because you don't have a hypothesis about the underlying basis of some 
dependency of one on the other, but instead you're doing exploratory analysis of the association between two variables, and you might later uh, come up with a hypothesis or a model about why one is a function of the other, but uh, when you're doing correlation, you're only looking at degree of association and testing whether that association is non-zero. Okay, so in the philosophical scheme of things, remember that you are not proposing that y is a function of x. Okay, instead you're looking at y1 and its association with y2, and you could just as easily state it the other way around. You're asking about the nature of that association. That's really it. That's all I want to talk about with purpose of correlation. We'll talk about how to calculate later and how to do that in SAS Jump. But make sure um, you know the difference between correlation and regression. All right. That's the end. <laughs>